After nearly six months of radio silence, we finally have brand new Pippi content. Through the magic of Adult Swim's 2022 April Fool's stunt. An annual tradition that either sees something ambitious or completely goofy every year. And this year was certainly ambitious. As from midnight until 2.30, Adult Swim's lineup was invaded by the darkness. As Pippi and Bun Bun traverse through both the animated and live action medium, in what appears to be a prologue for a proper Pippi series. As after netting 20 million views on YouTube, you know they're gonna get a pickup for a full season. Let's break down Pippi's tragic journey throughout April Fool's Night, with this interesting reinterpretation of the immensely popular proof of concept. And to stay in the loop of all things animation, please be sure to subscribe to the Roundtable with notifications on, so you never miss a video. With all that said, let's dive in. So at the time of recording this, it's still April 1st, and Pibby has hijacked the Adult Swim Hub on HBO Max, featuring a corrupted layout and concept trailer from Halloween. It is clear they're moving forward with Pibby, recognizing its insane potential as the first Adult Swim crossover show in years. As for the April Fool's stunt proper, we open with the Learning with Pibby theme song, just like in the trailer. But only a few seconds in, everything glitches out. Shifting Pibby and Bun Bun to Rick and Morty, Spider-Verse or No Way Home style. Bun Bun is immediately spooked, but we get to see how intuitive and optimistic Pibby is. Trying to ease Bun Bun's worries by immediately declaring this a learning opportunity. The Rick and Morty episode in question is Total Rick All. Which, despite being one of my favorite episodes and having treasured memories tied to it, as when it premiered, my uncle was in town and it was his first Rick and Morty episode. They also used it last year for the Adult Swim Junior prank, and Adult Swim is already saturated with Rick and Morty content, so I guess this is their designated April Fool's episode. Pibby's optimism is immediately derailed by the darkness, creeping up towards them as they run for dear life. The darkness remaining visible in the background as we watch the Smith family feed into this parasite's bullshit under the guise of Uncle Steve. God, classic episode. The episode then proceeds to play out as normal until Summer's encounter with the Terra Strong voice parasite, in which Pippi and Bun Bun appear alongside a cast of characters, appearing rather confused as they know they don't belong here. Pippi and Bun Bun pop up once again during the Where's Waldo shot, and before we cut to commercial break, we can hear the corruption creeping in. Can you find me? Check out all these zany characters! We then get some dope original Rick and Morty animation when Morty contemplates shooting Rick, unsure if he's truly a parasite. The darkness affecting Morty as his eyes roll to the back of his head and he slowly corrupts. But this glitch in reality seems to be temporary, as not only is Rick unfazed, but Morty himself goes back to normal. It seems as if Pippi and Bun Bun were transported by the corruption itself, slowly affecting the reruns that are otherwise on a fixed script. Look at the darkness as the fourth wall. The characters don't acknowledge it, even in a show as meta as Rick and Morty, because not only is it not supposed to be there, but the characters can't even perceive it. This is kind of trippy to explain, but look at it like this. Imagine if we had a fourth wall in real life, that there was an audience watching us that we couldn't even hear or see. But then out of nowhere, something just clicks in your brain. A switch is flipped, and you're suddenly aware of an otherworldly presence. That kind of switch would need to be flipped for these characters in order for them to process what's truly going on. And as the episode comes to a close, the credits begin to glitch out. Pippi and Bun Bun coping with the speculation that this is a mere Halloween special for Rick and Morty. That's why everything's so creepy. Rick and Morty might be meta, but they still play it straight, and more importantly, they don't directly interact with the audience. The fictional show Pibby is from is that of a preschool show, thus operating under those rules. Shows like Dora and Blue's Clues is frequently interacting with the audience. So that switch is already flipped for Pibby. Those characters are already aware of the audience, already aware of the fourth wall, and thus are able to perceive the corruption. And I'm not gonna lie, they basically went all out for Rick and Morty, though their shows do have glitches, although they're few and far between. As after Rick and Morty wraps up, Pibby and Bun Bun wander through Smiling Friends, taking a stroll, visible in the background during Charlie's stroll through hell. During a bump about blockchains, tragedy strikes again, as Bun Bun becomes corrupted by the darkness, very much worrying Pibby, who's unable to comprehend what's going on. 
It seems as if this corruption is affecting Adult Swim itself, which leads me to believe each of these shows aren't different universes, but the networks themselves. Maybe each show is kind of like its own planet, a la Space Jam 2. But this would explain why the shows and bumpers are affected. And yeah, it gets even weirder as we hit the iconic Eric Andre episode with the who killed Hannibal scene. But once we hit this golden moment of meme history, things take a very wild turn. Who killed Hannibal? Who killed Hannibal? Yeah, I nearly shit myself. And remember what I said about the characters of Pippi already having that switch flipped in their mind? Because they come from a preschool show? Well, Pippi is seen playing to the camera, questioning why the audience isn't responding. Pretty, please help us? Why aren't you saying anything? But uh, hey, viewers at home aren't playing by those rules. It's Adult Swim. They're all sleepy, high, or drunk. Everyone's just as lost as you, Pippi. The glitch then affects Aqua Teen, as we see corrupted Bun Bun just having the time of his life. I mean, look at him go, damn dude. Pippi desperately trying to chase after her friend. I suspect once Bun Bun became corrupted, he himself was able to spread the corruption, running amok throughout Aqua Teen as he spreads his chaotic energy everywhere. As Pippi, although confused, is doing her best to keep him at bay. As the bumps get gradually distorted, Again, I can only assume by Bun Bun's presence. They end up landing in Bird Girl, before Pippi gets separated from Bun Bun as a whole, ending the night with an episode of Joe Para that goes completely uninterrupted until the credits. And although there's a lack of the darkness or any corruption, it's still pretty depressing as we see a cold, shivering Pippi wandering by herself in the snow appearing in the same rough state that she was in when she began to traverse the original world in the concept trailer. And while a full series could tell the story from the top a third time, I think we may be able to consider this the end of the official Pippi prologue, with episode 1 picking up with Pippi in a new world, still trying to find Bun Bun, but far too late to prevent the darkness from spreading. The televised multiverse is in trouble, and it's up to one adorable nigga to save the day. And with that, the prologue comes to a close. I love this. Using the annual April Fool's tradition to give us lore? To properly set up the story of Pibby? Yeah, it was kind of predictable. And I thought it was going to lose its novelty, given that I expected it to run throughout the entire night. But with it only being two and a half hours, 90 minutes about commercials, it was fine. And a great way to tide us over until we get the full series. Which at this rate, I am confident will be announced by this summer at Comic-Con. But as always, these are just my thoughts and I want to hear yours. What do you think? Do you agree with our interpretation of the pity lore or do you believe something else is afoot? And thank you for putting up with the audio quality of this video. I recently moved and I have zero sound panels in this closet, but that was not going to stop me from preaching the good word of pity. Drop your thoughts in the comments below or keep the conversation going by giving us a follow at RoundTableVids and at AustricVox on Twitter and Instagram. If you enjoyed this video, please throw it a like and subscribe to the Roundtable for more PB content. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have an awesome day. See ya!